Hey everyone, and welcome to our full video review for the new Gigabyte Sabre 15. To kick things off, we need to go over the specs of the machine. So it starts us off with the CPU, which is an Intel i7 7700HQ. The GPU inside is a GTX 1050 Ti with 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM. Memory included is 16 gigabytes of DDR4. For storage, there's a 128 gigabyte M.2 and a one terabyte hard disk drive. For connectivity, there's built-in gigabit ethernet LAN, Intel dual band wireless and Bluetooth 4.0. Powering the device is a 47 watt hour battery with a 120 watt AC adapter. There's a built in HD web camera above the 15.6 inch FHD 1920x1080 IPS anti glare display. On the left hand side of the machine, there's the AC adapter port, Ethernet port, two mini display ports, HDMI port, USB 3.1 Type C port, and a USB 3.0 port. And on the right hand side, there's a headphone and microphone jack. USB 2.0 port, USB 3.0 port, and the Kensington lock. Taking a look at the interior of this laptop, the first thing you might notice are the single heat pipes that come off um, of the CPU and of the GPU that head over to their fans and disperse both for the CPU out the back and the GPU out of the side. Now, um, you might notice that doesn't seem like a lot of copper pipes and really it's about the bare minimum you can have. We'll see how that stacks up in our gaming tests and in our heat tests in just a little bit and see what effects that may or may not have on this laptop. We have our RAM slots right here. There's one located in it currently. There's an open slot available for expansion if you would like to add more. Your M.2 is located over here. You could obviously put larger sizes or faster speeds in. We also have an M.2 with our Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on it. Our platter drive is located right here. This is our one terabyte drive. You could replace this with solid state memory if you wanted to find a two and a half um, SSD and do that. Or if you wanted more capacities, larger sizes, you could also replace it and do that as well. We have two speakers, one right here and one right here down in the front. Um, this is the front of the laptop. These would then be pointing downward and echoing off of whatever surface that the laptop is on to deliver the uh, sound to the user. And then up at the top with this empty slot is the removable battery, which is easy to remove. It comes off of the machine really simply. You don't even have to take the whole outside of the rest of it off. It easily pops off if you want to have a backup battery or if you want to replace your battery. The keyboard on the Sabre has RGB backlighting that can be adjusted in multiple zones, or there are a variety of presets with different lighting effects. You can also program and customize individual keys as hotkeys if you need to do that too. It's a nice touch. The face of the keyboard is steadily mounted and there's only a small amount of flex, which is nice to see. The keys are tactile and have short travel while typing. Overall, they feel pretty good while using them. The screen quality of the Sabre is actually a little bit better than I would have imagined it with the entry price of this laptop. It has solid color representation and the black levels seem to hold up really well. It also has pretty nice viewing angles from a variety of directions. The weight of the laptop by itself is right around five pounds. And if you're gonna bring the charge cable along with it, the total weight of the two combined is 6.25 pounds. We took our heat gun out to get some readings of the temperatures while gaming. As you can see, the middle of the laptop where the GPU and CPU are centrally located starts to get a little bit warm, but the rest of the laptop stays at some pretty normal temperature reading levels. Then taking a look at the back side of the laptop, you can see where this heat is dispersed out both the back and the side of the machine. As for the decibel levels while gaming, for the fans, we had readings of 43 up away from the laptop. Down right in front, we had readings of 53. And then coming around to the side where the GPU emits most of its heat, we had readings of around 60. To start things off with our benchmarks, we fired things up with Firestrike and scored 6,755, which makes it 38% better than all machines that have ran this test. Our second test was with Cinebench, our OpenGL score was 90, and our CB score was 690, a tiny bit lower than normal, but there might have been a little bit of thermal throttling during this test. Our next test was with Crystal Disk to get the sequential read and write speeds of both the SSD and the hard disk drive. The SSD read at 523 megabytes and wrote at 207. And the hard disk drive read at 138.3 megabytes and wrote at 130.5. Moving on to our real world testing with games, we tested Grand Theft Auto first on very high with no MSAA and then it with times two and times four. We had FPS levels of 72, 59, and 49. 
the GPU's temperature while testing was at 77 and the CPU's was at 78. Our second test was with Rise of the Tomb Raider on low, medium, and high. We had FPS readings of 73, 59, and 53. The GPU's temperature was at 81 degrees and the CPU's was at 80. Our third test was with Dirt Rally on medium, high, and ultra with MSAA at times four. We had FPS readings of 98, 89, and 60. And our GPU's temperature while testing was 78 degrees while our CPU's was down at 69. And for our final test, we ran Hitman on low, medium, and high with FXAA. We had FPS readings of 64, 59, and 48. The GPU's temperature was at 77 and the CPU's temperature was at 74. If you'd like to take a closer look at any of the specific BIOS menu screens, make sure you pause the video on the one you'd like to view closer. If not, be sure to check out the product link in the description or leave any comments down below if you have questions for us here at Exotic PC. I've been Andrew saying thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for future product overviews and reviews.